On Saturday night, a massive crowd turned out in Barcelona demanding the release of Catalonia's jailed former leaders. The demonstration was held on Catalonia's National Day and attracted 750,000 people. We are here to have a free country. We stand with Puigdemont. He and all of the Catalan government are in our hearts. I went to all the demonstrations because I want my grandsons to have a life that we didn't have. We're here to defend our politics, defend those currently in prison, and to defend democracy. I'm here to fight for our human rights, for our future, for our culture, and for, the, for our children and their future. Earlier this week, pro-independence protests ended in clashes with police as activists tried to block railway stations in the cities of both Barcelona and Girona. The standoff took place after a general strike brought much of the region to a halt, with activists blocking crucial transport networks in major cities, again in protest over the jailing of former regional leaders. Madrid accuses them of rebellion and sedition, and has annulled Catalonia's declaration of independence. Several former Catalan leaders, including the ex-president, fled to Belgium, where they're now awaiting a decision on their fate. Mayors from a number of Catalan towns arrived in Brussels to voice support for their deposed colleagues. They faced a rally staged by Spanish Unity supporters. And we spoke to Anna Arque, a Catalan spokesperson for the European Partnership for Independence, as she joined us from one of the uh, pro-independence demonstrations. The Spanish state is using all the repressive force to occupy the Catalan institutions. And obviously, the people, Catalan, is just not going to allow it to happen. Because this is just not a democratic behavior. It's, a, it's an outrage. It's very hypocritical for, for them, for the Spanish state, to pretend to make believe that they are the ones bringing peace when they are the ones bringing the violence and occupying in an illegitimate way the Catalan institution. The Spanish state only has to follow all the international treaties that they signed, that they defend and promote the self-determination and the universal rights. Independence are legitimate. Independence are legal. Our sister channel, RT America, has been given until Monday to register as a foreign agent in America. That's on the orders of the U.S. Justice Department, which set the deadline for Thursday, November the 9th. If RT America fails to do so, its bank accounts could be frozen. The order was made under legislation adopted more than 70 years ago, before World War II, to counter Nazi propaganda in America. RT's Medina Kotinova reports a news channel but at the moment we are in fact the news the mounting pressure on RT has this week culminated in an ultimatum sent to us by the US Justice Department RT America has been required to register as a foreign agent in the United States by Monday we've been left with no other choice but to comply but RT's editor-in-chief says the channel is being forced into conditions in which it simply cannot work. Just imagine, you work in the media and have to sign everything you do with foreign agent or produced by a foreign agent. How does it feel for any media outlet to disclose its personal data, its contracts, to have to declare any interviews that you do to ministries and institutions? This can't be called part of the job. These conditions are aimed at destroying us as mass media. At the moment, Russian lawmakers are drafting tit-for-tat measures targeting American finance media in Russia. Well, there is a list of candidates that might be hit by those, and among them are CNN, Voice of America, Radio Liberty, and its current time television channel. But the crackdown on RT in the U.S. poses some very uncomfortable questions. Those who are doing this in the U.S. have always been proud of being the world's number one Democrats. And freedom of speech has always been the main value adhered to by them. 
There's no democracy without freedom of speech. An attack on our media in the U.S. is, make no mistake, an attack on freedom of speech itself. Pressure has been mounting on RT ever since we were accused of somehow making U.S. voters choose Trump over Hillary last year. But can one channel really wield that much power, or is this just an attempt to stifle alternative views? And pressure on the Russian media doesn't end there. U.S. lawmakers are now considering a bill that would give satellite providers the right to block channels funded by the Kremlin. The document was submitted by Senator John McCain. Now, the uh, vice presidential candidate for the Green Party in the 2016 election slammed the crackdown on RT America, calling it, quote, outrageous. Ajamu Baraka also said that media outlets like CNN and the New York Times should be registered as, quote, agents of capitalism because they receive huge amounts of funding from various private enterprises. Well, we spoke to uh, various analysts for their reaction. Well, this is absolutely outrageous. I think we could call it McCarthyism, but it really is McCarthyism on steroids now, isn't it? Uh, RT has a growing audience share in America and around the world, and RT puts the different narrative out to the war party narrative on issues like the Syrian conflict, for example. So I think these uh, warmongers in the U.S. are very angry that RT has been so successful. I have no personal link with Russia, and I'm not paid to appear. I'm asked an opinion. I give the opinion. I've never been censored, and I've never been edited. I cannot say the same for my own personal experiences and appearances on CNN or even here in London on BBC. So Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin's paths, they crossed the APEC summit in Vietnam only briefly but productively. We'll give you details in a moment. I think uh, the old uh, situations are coming back. I understand Putin, and I understand Russia, if they are not in favor that uh, NATO is coming uh, to the, directly to the border of Russia. But on the other side, I think there came back the old uh, impression of confrontation. That's a mistake on the Western side, especially by the Americans, and also on the other side.